this nice little pull this is very cleverly done hats off to your boy seriously like here this is stashed up there stash right here now if you pull this up here you can just pull it and this you gotta take this out this is like the uh it can accidentally engage by itself also really good it's a very nice safety there they go there it is that's so sick I'm gonna put two of these on my boat. Two of these. And they don't weigh anything, really. They weigh hardly anything for the mod. Why wouldn't you get one of these? I mean, they're already perfectly set up. If you wanted to attach linear actuators to it, you could. If you really wanted to do it, just right here, right there. And maybe we will do that. But right now, I mean, I'm really happy with this manual version and how well this just very, very simple system works. So that's just a sneak peek into one of the products that we have for this boat. We've done a lot of cool things, including bringing forth our brand new Generation 7 core ideas. This is just what it's coming out to be. I have a lot more exciting things to show you along the line, but before I can get to any of this, I gotta talk to you about how I fixed this boat so I could be able to do this today. After everything I did to it in the past, all the mistakes I made, we're finally going to fix them now. Close in pop rivets, who I highly suspect will fail over time, given their position underneath the water line and just a hollow yeah. rivet is structurally terrifying. So we got this. And I want to go ahead and show you how to put that in. FYI, I'm only doing this because I couldn't find a uh, fitting for the air hammer to do this and this is what the guy from Home Depot told me to do. It sounded like a good idea. We'll see how well it works. How about we try doing this on some scrap pieces of you know what before we actually try and do the, the boat where there's consequences. All right, it's ready. Let's grab the gun. Let's grab the rivets. We're gonna put it over here. Goes in like that. Goes like that. And apparently, you smacking the other side of the gun while you hold the bucking bar, or some people I've seen use a hammer. We're gonna use the bucking bar. Okay, fail. Maybe it's a little too much. Let's turn it down a little bit to like, maybe 30, what do you think? That's a little bit. FYI, I'm showing better. you this process of how awkward it was because this wasn't a perfect process. And uh, right. if I showed you this like in a seamless video and I led you on that this isn't somewhat challenging, it would just be a gross lie. So you can take from this what you will. If you're gonna be one of these pros that comes to critiques my freaking buck riveting job, you. Yeah. it looks I mean I got it to work but that's that sure as hell not gonna seal <laughs> maybe it's not what you want hearing protection is it strong it's a little bit strong right there I think we did it, kind of. 
That time, okay, so it really does need two people. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's kind of a real bitch to do that. What a show. It's not confidence inspiring, you know? I mean, it's only have to get on it. Well, and I know some people don't even use an air hammer. They just use an actual hammer and they use like a, a thing and they boom, they freaking hit it. It can make it almost easier to use a hammer. I don't know. So we got this whole thing around right there. Well, I have like several different rows doing. I was gonna have Dominic do it with me, but he's like out. Let's see all these and those. Those four. I have to. These aren't gonna work. Okay, so after I posted this video accidentally, prematurely, some people hit me up and said you needed a concave head bit for the air hammer and that would have done this a lot better. But how I did it, it took longer to hammer it and longer for it to set and the rivets don't look as good, but they still work. Okay, so it was a little hard to catch on for the curve, but as I started going on, you could feel it different. You could feel the difference in the sound of the rivet once you buck it for so long, then it starts to become less of a vibration and more tight in the sound changes, and then you know it's about to be done. We are drilling out the terrifying closed end pop rivet. Look how weak it is. I mean, it comes out that easy. Imagine if it just hits like a rock. That's like it for it. So the buck rivets are much stronger. In hindsight, the advice the Home Depot rep gave me to just cut the head off and turn it into a like a buck riveting tool did work, but I'm sure there's better tools out there. Like this didn't do the greatest job. I've seen people do it and they do it within seconds and the rivet's not all flat in the top like mine is. And you can also crack the hole if you buck it too tight. So I was paranoid about that. And so, and there's also drill bits that are specific for rivets because apparently if you get it at the precise hole to buck rivet size like that's the best chance of getting longevity if, if the hole's bigger than the rivet head then i guess it's prone to leaks towards the end of this on some holes i started actually using some 3m5200 in there to kind of help it i already had some sealing in there before so this the, it was already kind of sealed together it was weird like I, so there's sealing between the ribs and the hole and now there's a little bit more sealant in there. This is the best that it's gonna get. So this is either gonna work or it's not. It's either gonna leak slowly or it's not gonna leak at all. I mean, once I epoxy and it gets really deep in around those rivet heads, I I think we can stop the leaks. And I think we can have a pretty good longevity out of this boat use. But just look at all the crap I had to go through because I gutted those bench seats. What a mistake. Come and join the largest and fastest growing social media platform for small boat building and fishing. Come and show your pictures off, show your boats and your fish. Come give advice, come get advice. All right, see how this rivet's all jacked up? It's like, they're fragile. Other key reason we're getting rid of them. All right. That mess is done down there. They actually came out pretty good. Some better than others. I mean, we're not ever doing it ever. We only had a, a few serious weird ones. Like that one's probably not real good. I don't know what to do about that one. To drill these out would be like, there's a process you have to do to drill them out. It's not, you can't just like drill them out like, like normal.
I mean, I think my son did a good job of holding most of them straight. He got like 90, like almost 100% of them straight. It's just a few of them that are questionable. Like those are not, I don't know, they were solid in there, so I don't really know. I don't know where, we might have to revisit some of these tomorrow. Because we didn't, this is the back, we started on the back, we really didn't get our stuff together until up front. You can tell there's a noticeable difference in quality. So we're just gonna may have to go back here and and fix some of these before we get too far. Which isn't a big deal, because the majority of them came out pretty well and some of these can still be retightened. There's only a few of them that were, they were like utter failures. Like this one just had problems. I don't even know what to make about that one. That was just, that was just odd. But uh, I also went through and redid all these rivets because they were all half inch. I made them back to one eighth, one, like a one eighth pull rivets. Plus when I grinded everything down to get the sand off that messed up the, the popper rivets. The popper rivets are just like grossly, terribly fragile. So uh, for them to be structurally okay, there need to be no distortions. And so any ones that were injured or messed up, I just took them off. It's pretty happy about the end result here. Now what I need to do is redo this transom. Not because I think the transom is really all that bad condition. In fact, I probably could. All right, so we got it done. That was a real pain in the A, but without that, we couldn't have been able to move on to our much cooler things and I'm bringing you a whole new generation core. Going back to the Utilidec principles, bring you a whole new Gen 7 core. We already passed Gen 6, I call it Gen X because Gen 6 just sounds stupid. If you like this video, check out my channel. Subscribe and go and click on there. There's tons of videos just like this all over the place, including playlists that are entire series about any sort of project or boat or whatever that you're wanting. It's all there. Also check out Patreon, help support this channel, help me stay fan sponsored and get serious perks in the process. Thank you.